A one-sided test can go one of two ways. Either the alternate hypothesis is a less than statement, or it's a greater than statement. The pictures with my amazingly drawn normal models that go with this are if it uses less than, the rejection region is in the bottom of the normal curve. If the alternate hypothesis uses greater than, the rejection region is in the upper part of the curve. If it's not in that part of the curve relative to that hypothesis, you fail to reject. The calculations proceed as p hat equals capital X over n, number of successes over number of trials. Standard deviation of p hat is p, one minus p over n, all square root. Z is gonna be p hat minus p over the standard deviation of p hat. From there, if the alternate hypothesis uses less than, you find the area in the lower tail, which I'll call A. Whatever your z-score is, use GeoGebra or your normal model calculation, find the area less than that z-score to correspond to the less than in the hypothesis. Similarly, if the alternate hypothesis uses greater than, find the area greater than that z-value and find the area in the upper tail. Either way, we're calling the area A. The p-value in a one-sided test is just equal to that area, either less than or greater than your calculated z-score. From there, the conclusion is if the p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, you fail to reject. Although realistically, if the p-value is exactly equal to alpha, you'd panic a little inside and recheck your calculations. Now a two-sided test is similar, but it's different enough to cause problems. In a two-sided test, your alternate hypothesis uses not equal to. So you don't really concern yourself with whether it's strictly less than or greater than. You say we're gonna reject the null hypothesis if we're too far down in the normal model or too far up in the upper tail. Now we've still picked a significance level alpha, but since it's a two-sided test, we have to use area alpha over two for each one of these. Here we put all the area alpha in either the lower or upper tail, but here we split it up amongst the two tails. Now the calculations you'll notice work the exact same way, p hat, standard deviation of p hat, and z. But from there is where it takes a turn. Now if z is greater than zero, you find the area in the upper tail because you've got a positive z-score, so you're looking above that. If z is negative, you've got a value in the lower tail, so you need to find the area less than z. The p-value here is twice the area you get there. Why is that? Because your goal is to always compare the p-value to alpha. If the p-value is less than alpha, you can reject the null hypothesis. But here we had to split alpha over two and alpha over two for here. So the correction we make is just multiply the p-value times twice the area, then you can just compare it to alpha directly. That's the great thing about a lot of hypothesis tests. They just boil down to two numbers, p-value and alpha. You compare them to decide whether to reject, or if the p-value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject. You probably notice the most important thing then is to get the alternate hypothesis correct, because if you don't get that right, you can't possibly know which area you're looking at, the upper or lower tail, whether you need to double it, and then you can't make the right conclusion from there.